you guys have flooded me with uh, question recommendations. I have a folder in my phone uh, that's just full of questions um, and I can't get around to them all. But uh, here's one question that seems to be coming across my screen quite often. Um, Hi Ian, curious how long you've been keeping bees. What would be your recommendation on how much experience a person should have before he expands his bee business? A growth rate per year with a goal to reach a thousand in five to seven years. What do you think? Is that being unrealistic? Thank you, Paul from Minnesota. So the timeline you set out here might be a little quick. But I'll just put it into perspective. I'll just uh, explain to you what I did. Um, back in 1999, that's when I bought my first four hives. And I bought those first four hives with absolutely no beekeeping experience. I took a beekeeping course while I was in Diploma of Agriculture. Just by chance took the course and it hooked my interest. So I bought four hives, bought some equipment, kind of dibble dabbled around. Wasn't near the information uh, back then about beekeeping as there is now. I started with four hives and I split up to about 12 or whatever and then and then I got ambitious and split up to 30. I didn't have any idea what I was doing. I went and cut out this, uh, this swarm that was in a church and I dropped it into a beehive. I had no idea what I was doing but I dropped it in and, and I must have got the queen because the, the hive lived. So I put the 31 hives into winter that year and the only hive that survived was that that church hive. I called it my holy hive. After that I bought another 40 hives and I got into the business a little more seriously. Uh, the guy I bought the 40 hives from, I kind of leached on him for advice, used him as my mentor. He helped me step out just what I had to do to, to look after these hives and just, just what I had to do to get through that full year of management. And that feedback from that fellow was a huge help to me. Without his guidance and without his advice, I would have fallen flat and I would not be a beekeeper right now. So my whole operation now stemmed from the 40 hives I bought from that other beekeeper and the holy hive that survived that winter. Um, and I built from there. I went 40 hives that year. Then with some advice, I invested into equipment, um, built a honey house, bought an extractor, uh, built up to 80 hives. Uh, wintered again. I was wintering outdoors at this time. Uh, leaning on my family to help me with all the work involved. At that time our farm was a lot smaller and we're a lot more scattered with our directions and where we we're going. Uh, so I was farming at the same time as the grain farming and cattle farming. Um, but I used the bees on the side. The bees kind of paid my taxes for a little bit. And then somehow <clears throat> I built up to 250 hives and such, and then I signed a contract with BeeMade. BeeMade was not my established point of sale for my crop, so that is a secure market. And that is very important for the growth of my business. And things kind of come together. It's brought me to where I am now, uh, 1,200 hives since 1999. You know, 19 years, that's pretty good. But one piece of advice I will give you, uh, and use this piece of advice. Build your bees and buy your equipment. Okay? The reason I say that is because if you buy your bees and you take a loan out on these bees, those bees could be dead the next spring. They could die over winter. Then you have this big term debt sitting there without any livestock to help pay it back. Typically beekeepers, one of their biggest mistakes they make, they buy too much stock as to the facility they own. So one way you can manage that very challenge is by buying your equipment. That's a big investment and it's very costly. And then building your bees because it takes a lot of effort to build bees. So you buy your equipment, you buy your facility, you have your facility set up, your investments there. It's not going to die on you. You have value you can take and then liquidate if you have to. Okay, you see what I'm getting at there? And then you build your bees. You have to buy bees. I mean, you have to have a foundation stock. I bought 40 hives. So you buy your stock and you build off that. And you just keep on building. As you build your business in this way, um, you're going to be gaining experience at the same time. Um, they have, uh, there's the old saying, a 10,000 hour rule. And there is truth behind that. So as you build your bees, as you expand your business, you're eventually going to hit that 10,000 hour mark. 
Like it just comes like a revelation. You're like, I'm going through all these motions. I'm putting together all this process. All of a sudden I can relate what I'm doing and it's making sense. It is quite the amazing thing. Um, you walk into an apiary and you just have that instinctive feel of what's going on. And you'll acquire that. That acquires with time. And when you get to that point, uh, you feel more confident. You'll be able to take more risk on. Um, you become uh, a better beekeeper, so you become more profitable. And the whole thing just compounds itself. And uh, that's what makes this business very exciting. One thing I like about the beekeeping business, as compared to the farm business, is that it involves a lot less asset base to get established. Like you can look at the grain farm, the cattle farm, you just need so much investment and you just need so much capital uh, put forward that it, it is almost impossible to start from scratch unless you have a bank account behind you. Beekeeping is a little bit different. Beekeeping you can start with nothing. Beekeeping you can buy some hives in a box and you can just keep building over the years. It's taken me 19 years to get to the point where I am right now. You start with a box of bees. The hardest lessons I've ever learned but that that work uh, that work life balance uh, it's impossible especially when you start up a family and you learn the hard way either the business is going to suffer or your family relation is going to suffer so make the right choice and don't forget the family side of the equation because that is the core of your life and then build your whole work management around that okay you got to put the time in business doesn't care about family you got to put the time into the business otherwise it suffers very demanding right make sure you always put the attention towards that business never spare on it when the business needs attention it has to get it work 15 hour days if you have to seven days a week that business needs to be looked after but the moment when the business isn't demanding your labor, switch it back over to that family because that's very important. And when you start finding you're getting bigger and you're pouring more and more time into your business, this is when you start getting creative and you start managing your work a lot better. And this is when you bring in employees. And this is when you bring in facility. And this is when you develop programs to manage the work to help maintain your life. It's a very hard balance to figure out. As entrepreneurs, it's probably one of the biggest lessons that you have to learn. And you can't be told on how to do it. You just got to navigate that one out yourself. Because everybody has different financial restraints. Everybody has different abilities of work ethic and family commitment and smarts. And uh, the way you put everything together uh, will dictate in how you manage that business and how you can maintain your personal life. So that's just getting a little bit deep, but uh, it's all part and parcel. One thing about what I'm doing is I'm managing my honey farm, but I'm also president of our, of our family farm. We run 3,500 acres of land. We calve out four to 500 cows. There's a lot of work to do on our farm, but it's a family effort. And that alone is an impossible mission. But we all have a role and we all have a purpose in the company and we all participate in, and we manage together to get all this work done. Um, we have our responsibilities and our priorities and at the same time we allow ourselves to step back when we have to. We manage work, we manage help to help us with the work and um, we are very committed to our business and we are very committed to our families. So running a business is nothing easy. And once you get into it, and once you get neck deep into business, you're going to think to yourself, holy shit, that day job isn't so bad. So in a roundabout way, I haven't answered your question at all. I have a stack of questions basically all along the same theme as this question, um, all with you know slightly different angles to it. So I'll be addressing some of these questions further on as we go. And hopefully you'll see as I go through the year, I'll be able to address a lot of uh, what you guys are asking me just 
on the day-to-day -day work that you see me doing here. Uh, it all comes together. It's all part and parcel.